Mortlach was the name of the abbey and village founded by St. Malog in, in the 7th century. Dufftown eventually replaced that name, but James Finlander, Donald McIntosh, and Alex Gordon decided to keep the Mortlach name when they started up a distillery in 1823. It went through numerous owners and was no longer operating when George Cowley got it up and running again in 1853. George and his son Alexander were successful enough to build Mortlach's reputation as a blending malt and in 1923 Cowley sold it to John Walker and Sons and from there it became DCL and today Diageo. When the 12 ton mash tun is running, hot water is continuously running over the malt grist to wash the starch out. The water temperature of 64 degrees Celsius increases to 72 degrees and then to 88 degrees, producing 54,000 liters of sugary wort. The six 54,000 liter washbacks are made of Oregon pine. The wort in the washbacks is cooled between 16 and 18 degrees Celsius depending on the outside temperature. The worts are fermented from 50 to 60 hours to get a meaty, spicy wash. Mort Black has one of the most complicated distilling processes in the industry. It has two wash stills at 7,500 liters and one at 17,500 liters. The first spirit still is 8,000 liters and the second is 8,500 liters and the third is 9,000 liters. Both the big wash and the big spirit still work together producing a double distilled spirit. The second and third wash still produce an intermediate spirit that now is sent to the Wee Witchy Spirit Still, which now produces the 2.81 triple distilled spirit. Mortlach still uses the old worm tubs instead of condensers, so there is less copper contact, as with the whole distilling process. It produces a meaty, robust and spicy spirit. For that, Mortlach is known as the Beast of Dufftown. George's son, Dr. Alexander Cowley, worked with the famous distillery architect Charles Doig when they expanded Mortlach in 1897. It was an asset to be connected to the Strasbay Line Railway and also to be one of the first to have electrical lighting. Mortlach was the first licensed Speyside distillery in the famous Dufftown Whiskey area. Well, welcome to Noel's World of Whiskey, and uh, I am going to get into something that I have only experienced once, and it was in a whiskey bar with a friend, and he said, you got to try some of this stuff, Mordlach, and I'd never heard of it before, and maybe I should have, uh, because Mordlach is a famous distillery, and today is, of course, part of Diageo. Uh, the Flora and Fauna series. So, anyways, I tried it, and what I remember about it was it was one of the strangest whiskeys I had ever tried. Scotch whiskey. I think I said to, to my buddy there, I said, this stuff tastes something like ratwurst sausage or something. <laughs> uh, something like that. Yeah, memories. It was a few years back. Anyways, new bottle. And I hadn't seen this for, for some time, and then I started seeing it, but not in the 16th. So, when I did see it in the 16th, which is nicknamed the Beast of Duffdown. So this was the first distillery, the first legal distillery in Duffdown. And um, let's put this right there. There's a good place for it. Um, let's open it up. And let's see what this interesting whiskey is all about. I have read reviews on it. And all I'm going to say is it's got some very, very interesting um, reviews. So um, I'm really curious about this one. Uh, it also has a very unusual distilling process. This is almost triple distilled, uh, similar to your spring bank. Uh, what is it, hazel burn? Um, anyways. And of course, Auchentosh is another triple distilled lowland whiskey. So, interesting bottle. There it is. 
and uh, I believe it's bottled at 43, 43.4%. Okay, and it um, sort of gives you a bit of an idea of the color of it there, but I think it's, it's a Diageo product, so there's probably coloring in it, and there's probably chill filtering, but tonight I'm going to leave that one alone. We're not going to talk about that. We are going to enjoy a review on Mortlac 16, a Dufftown distillery. In fact, the first, as I mentioned, that was legal. And until uh, Glenn Fittick, it was the only distillery. Okay. Right into the nose before even reading any history. <laughs> Okay, I'm not getting anything bizarre. It, it, it noses like a space side whiskey. It's got some uh, spicy uh, notes and it has uh, some sweetness to it. But I want to give you some quick history. Uh, of course, Mortlac is it, is from the original village. It goes back to the seventh century. It was part of uh, uh, an abbey uh, founded by Saint Malak and. Um, it, it changed as Dufftown, sort of, the village uh, was created. Now, the, the first distillery was, uh, that was licensed went to uh, James Finlader with his partners Donald McTavish and Alex Gordon, and that was in, uh, in 1823. And it went through numerous hands since then. I'm not going to get into all the, the, the changes in ownership, other than I will mention the Grant brothers. They were, Glenn Grant was... Uh, uh, basically stripping or gutting the buildings to use the equipment. So, um, anyways, it really is George Cowie is the guy that kind of saved the distillery, got it up and running again in the 1850s, him and his son Alexander. And uh, they did it with, with uh, uh, partner John Gordon. And uh, basically they stayed there right up until, I guess it was in 1923, the Cowies. Uh, sold it to John Walker and Sons, but there's there's a bit of history in between that, and uh, basically, um, we we look at George Cowie was a, a an engineer, quite a brilliant engineer, and he did a lot of um, he, he played around a lot with the um, with the setup of the of the stills, and also with this with his whiskey. It it was a preferred it was the most preferred whiskey in Scotland at the time of his distillery, and he had whiskey going all around the world. But anyways, um, eventually, as he got, John Gordon, of course, passed away, and as he got older, his son, Alexander, was a doctor. Uh, he came back to help run the distilleries, and that was 1890. And he worked with uh, Charles Doy, the famous uh, distillery uh, designer who designed the Pagoda, you know, and uh, he basically re- he re renovated or redesigned, expanded that distillery, and also was the uh, fellow that was responsible for the the, the two point eight one uh, distilling process. Now it it's quite complicated this uh, this process, and and I you know I, I I have read about it, I have tried to understand it. Uh, numerous people have made comments on it. They've tried to understand it, and uh, what I'm going to say is that. I'll describe the pot stills. They they have um, in the in the wash cycle they have a a couple of uh, seventy five hundred liter wash stills, and then they have a seventeen thousand five hundred liter uh, production still. And of course the spirit stills they're go they they go eight thousand eighty five hundred li and then they go to nine thousand. So. Anyways, the new make for Mortlac is blended from various double and triple distilled spirits, resulting in 2.81 distilled whiskey. Uh, but how it works is the big wash still and the big spirit still, that's the 17 fiber, and of course the 9,000 spirit still, they work together, resulting in the classic double distilled spirit. The second and third wash still also produce an intermediate spirit. This is then transferred to the Wee Witchy. 
a special spirit skill in which the they have a little picture of the small witch on it there. And this thing is going, you know, continuously. It's not getting a lot of copper exposure. And uh, basically, it's producing a pretty meaty spirit. On top of it, they use worm tubs. They still use the original worm tubs. And these tubs, again, they don't get a lot of good copper conversation with the spirit. So basically, their spirit is kind of starved of copper uh, purifying. So you're getting a lot of body, a lot of like a meaty body to this um, to this spirit. Now I haven't tasted this in, in years, and I, I don't. To be honest with you, I don't remember how it was. So I am just reading you how they talk about it. So let, that's enough. Let's now check it out and see. Is that is that basically what we're getting? Okay. So back to the nose. So we let it sit for a while. That was the idea of me rambling on. Let it sit for a while. New bottle. And I am I am getting a lot of body. Sweet notes. God, almost a bit of bubble gummy. You know, sort of a, yeah, bubble gum. Bubble gum uh, smell to it. Yeah, even a little mint. And uh, some citrus notes. Strawberry. But lots of body to this, I can tell. This is, you know, you can, it has a strong nose. It's a very strong nose. And I can, I can, I know this is going to get spicy. I can, I can, I can really pick up on it with the nose. Okay. The palate. So much. Right off the bat, spicy. Quite, <laughs> quite a coating. Quite a coating on the mouth. 43%, I'd swear this is 46. <laughs> or 48. So lots of spice. Not an alcohol burn, a spice burn. And um, a lot of body to this. I've got my tongue coated. The whole mouth is coated. I'm going to do it again. This time I'm going to chew it. I'm trying to think. I, I'm trying to place the bratwurst sausage thing. I talked about years ago. But there's some barbecue notes to this. Spicy. Not mag. Um, hot ginger. All spice. Even some bitter notes. Bittersweet. Why they use this in blends? It's uh, it's a, it's quite a strong. It's it, it's a very strong presentation, much stronger than um, you know a lot of the stuff I've been reviewing lately. Um, the coating on your mouth is not just spice, but it's I got that barbecue thing in the background there, like smoky barbecue. And the funny thing is, it's kind of like it's got some maritime notes, but no, it's not salty. Not really, you know, like it, it's got a bit of, is it a charred barrel? Like there is some, some peaty, peatiness to it, it seems, or is it the charred barrel? Interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. Um, the finish. Sweetness. I'm getting used to the bitterness now, so um, the spice is mellowed out a bit. Now I'm getting the caramel. 
Nice to see the caramel come in because it's just giving me another layer. Uh, not vanilla, caramel. <clears throat> the strawberries are, are kind of faint in the background, but they're there. And maybe even some banana notes. Uh, the finish is a longer finish than what I'd expect from a 43. But it's got a long finish. This might have one of the longest finishes of any 43 that I've... Uh, that I've um, reviewed so and you know I've reviewed over 150 of these so wow and of the few hundred that I've you know definitely more than you know, we'll say more like around 300 that I've tasted the scotches wow um, why have I not tasted more like I don't know other than in a bar you know a few years back and probably when we'd had a few so Interesting. Well, you know what we're going to be doing? It's a 43 and it's going to definitely be able to take, take water. So we're going to put water in this. I'm not shy about that 43 taking water. It's, uh, it's definitely not going to hurt it. So let's do it. This is an adventure tonight. I wasn't expecting this and uh, it is quite an interesting dram there. So, more black had obviously some very strong players involved in it during the, the, the Cowie era. You know, both George Cowie, uh, John Gordon, they were obviously very knowledgeable people. Uh, George being the engineer, I think John Gordon had experience in, in the whiskey business. Um, and also with Alexander, just a very brilliant guy. In fact, he became the, uh, I think he was the president of the, uh, uh, the, the, the Scotch Whiskey Association, the North Scotland Scotch Whiskey Association. And um, he represented over 40, 50 distilleries. Um, that's the kind of respect that uh, he had in the industry. So, And even after it was sold in, um, in 1923 to John Walker, they acknowledge the fact that he had all these customers all over the world that wanted to continue to get his whiskey. So they were trying to deliver uh, a product to his customers because they inherited, you know, they inherited actually a pretty good thing there. And uh, they realized that they had to, uh, you know, to satisfy these co customers, they had to offer what he had offered them, the quality of what he had offered them. His whiskey was sought after all over the world. So, um, in fact, George Cowie and Sons, I believe, the, uh, the, they sold his George Cowie whiskey, but it was more black, it was, it was, was the distillery, so. We're getting now uh, quite a bit of sweetness here. Our toffee notes and the banana mixed with some strawberry. Um, I'm definitely still getting the uh, a little bit of that spicy stuff on the nose, but the barbecue in the background again. The barbecue hasn't left. Oh boy, the sweet and the sour. We've got some oranges happening here now. Multi-layered whiskey, forty-three percent multi-layered. It has a. a a lot to offer what it would supposedly chill filtered I don't know supposedly you know they've added coloring for sure but man I, might be a little overpowering if they <laughs> if they didn't chill I don't know it's pretty it's a pretty interesting drink if it's chill filtered it's an interesting drink with water Solange Boy, that's nice with water. Man, sweet and sour. A bit of the bitterness has disappeared. I am getting a little bit of the wood now. There's still a bit of spice. The strawberries are strong. The, uh, the orange. Maybe even some uh, blackberries. Still coating my mouth. We talked about a long finish. This has got a long finish. Water 
does not hurt this. You know, this is the kind of drink that I definitely want to, after the reviews done, I'm definitely going to want to have another dram. Um, you know, I haven't had as much fun since I did my, my the Klein Leash. And you get these Diageo um, whiskeys that everybody is down on Diageo because of all their chill filtering and adding coloring and so on and so on. And it leaves me somewhere in the middle because... Um, Definitely some of their stuff I'd like to see them get away from that, or at least offer the the other alternative. But man, this is an amazing whiskey for if if they are chill filtering it, and I'm certain they are. Because there's a lot here. There really is. This one's for me. This is this has got a taste. That I think I could really um, get to like. It's got a really nice, beautiful on the palate. So this to me is going to be a big jump in score. I'm going to I'm going to be looking at about an 86 on this one here because um, I really like the layers, and I I don't think I've ever given an 86 to a a, a chill filtered whiskey, especially a 43. It's not making sense. You're probably thinking, am I out to lunch? Um, 85, 86 for sure on this whiskey, and 85 or 86 because it's it's doing everything. Regardless of we if we're going to deduct if we're going to deduct points from this uh, because of uh, it not ticking all the boxes, it does the palate justice. It really does. It's this is a really nice whiskey, and and, and what I like about it is that it goes so well with water. Um, only a few drops of water, but boy, 43, and you add a few drops of water, and it doesn't take anything away from it. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm recommending this. You have to try it. Um, if you haven't experienced Mortlach, you are missing out on scotch. If you want a cross-section of scotch, if you want to explore the Isla, uh, you want to get into the highlands, and you get the climb leashes, and... Uh, and go go up into the maybe bra or maybe uh, look at uh, uh, the Glen Garricks and and you're now down to the space side and you're looking at um, you know the the the, the Glen Allakies and you're looking at Dufftown. I mean, how many distilleries are in Dufftown? This is one you have to try. It, 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 you're missing out if you do not try this. Uh, because it has some unique character. I am going to leave it at that. So, I'm going to ask you to drink wisely, drink intelligently, do not drink and drive. Until the next time, Solange.